Okay, Bessie was born in Woodbury in 1882, and she lived in the same house all of her life that she was born in. Um, she was a number of things over the years. She was a hairdresser, she was a cook, she worked in the, the early ski resorts, she went out and did housekeeping, um, and she was just Bessie. She stayed home and, and did the housework. Uh, the sisters ran a tea room and an antique shop, but Bessie was really the backbone of the household. And then, in her late 60s, she started painting. She took an art course one night at an adult education program in Montpelier and decided she'd learned all she needed to know. Um, she didn't paint very long. She painted maybe seven or eight years, and then she had a stroke that partially paralyzed her, her arm and her shoulder, and she walked with a cane after that. Um, her paintings aren't very factual, weren't very factual, but Bessie painted what she liked, and she liked people, she liked children, and she liked animals. And in most of her paintings, you'll find a dog and someone sent her a, a postcard from Alaska that had a picture of Rin Tin Tin on it. And after that, every painting that Bessie did, she put Rin Tin Tin in. Sometimes he'd be a golden retriever, sometimes he'd be a beagle hound, sometimes he'd be a German shepherd, and sometimes he was just a little mutt. But he was always in her pictures. Um, her perspective wasn't really great. Sometimes if she painted a horse that was too big to go through the covered bridge, she'd just say, well, it doesn't really matter because I like horses better than I like bridges. Um, she painted June Wedding, which everyone is all dressed up and it's the white church and it's a typical Vermont town in June, except that we have fall foliage in the background. Um, her skating party looks really more like Halloween night because it's all done mostly in black with a, just a few bright colors in, in the um, children's clothes. She was really a woman ahead of her time. When they blacktop Route 14, there was a green, two greens through here, a double column is what they called it. The one in front of the town hall had several large trees. The one in front of the church had smaller trees and it used to have a bandstand in it. And Bessie was very disturbed because her father had planted those trees as saplings. So the day that the men arrived to cut the trees, Bessie took a big logging chain, as big as she could carry, and went out and chained herself to the tree because she didn't want them cutting down Papa's trees. And the sad part of it all is, is the fact that nowadays she could have done something about it. People would have helped her save her common. But back then they were more interested in getting rid of the mud, which really was very deep. But um, Bessie's thing was saving trees. And, and I mean, you, you really have to admire her for taking a stand. She was about 70 years old at the time. Uh, Bessie painted New Year's Eve. And the New Year's Eve painting is a picture of Bessie's home as it looked while she was growing up. There was a big set of barns across the road from the house where they had a livery stable and a lot of horses with a lot of activity around. And on Saturday nights, they used to have what they called balls in the upstairs ballroom of the Drennan Hotel. Um, the floor was a spring floor and people really liked to dance on it. So Bessie painted the people arriving. She also painted them um, not walking in, but dancing in. And the horses are in the yard, they're coming on horseback, they're coming in a horse and sleigh. These are all things that Bessie remembered from her childhood. And most of Bessie's paintings are based in her childhood, in Bessie's New Year's Eve painting. The horses, the people arriving for the ball, um, even Rin Tin Tin is there. In her Kent's Corner picture, she shows mostly houses. And these would have been houses that Bessie knew as she when she was a child. And it again shows the horse and sleigh, the children playing with their sleds in the snow. Um, basically Bessie's main theme 
is children and animals and, and the buildings she grew up around. Uh, her happy landing painting is a picture of the farm that used to belong to her sister Blanche and her husband. And Bessie really liked happy landing. Bessie spent a lot of time over there at that farm. Uh, it had a white house and red barns and she actually painted the happy landing sign that was on the barn, that's still on the barn. Um, one day when I was a child, well not a child, I was probably 12 or 13 years old, Bessie and Blanche and Francis had a squabble, so Bessie decided she'd walk to Happy Landing. And Arlene Ainsworth decided that it really wasn't safe for Bessie to be walking to Happy Landing, so she took her car and drove up the hill and stopped to give Bessie a ride and told her that she thought it wasn't safe for her to be walking and she'd be glad to give her a ride to Happy Landing. And Bessie had on her apron, she always wore an apron, and she says, well, you really don't have to worry about me, Arlene. And she lifts up her apron, and she has this big old horse pistol. She's holding it underneath it. <laughs> so then Arlene said she didn't know whether she was more afraid of something happening to Bessie or Bessie doing something with a horse pistol. <laughs> but this was the way Bessie operated. Um, and then in her June wedding picture, Flights of fancy are, are some of the words used to describe Bessie, and it shows up very well in this one. Because here is the bride, the groom, and all the people coming to attend the wedding in the white church in June, and in the background we have all the colorful autumn leaves. And this was the things that Bessie liked to do. If, if she felt like painting autumn leaves in June, that's what she did. Um, she did poppies at least two poppy pictures. One was orange, and I don't know what happened to that one, where it went. The one with the pink poppies in it, Sprague Bailey has, and uh, she painted babies in her poppies. Little tiny baby faces in the center of her poppies, and in one poppy, laying along the edge of a petal, you'll find a little baby. Um, her old dance hall is another picture of the, the swinging, the Drennan Hotel with the swinging floor. And that really was a big draw for people. There really weren't very many buildings in town at that point, big enough where people could get together and dance. And the floor was built on springs, and it made it easy for them to dance on. It, the floor would give as they were dancing. Um, and again, she shows her bright figures. She uses bright colors usually for her people and lots of activity. They're never just standing, they're, they're moving. Uh, skating at Mud Pond is, is a picture done at night. It's supposed to represent night. A lot of people call it her Halloween picture. But in reality, the children are skating on the pond under a full moon. It's done in blacks and grays with kind of an orange moon. And about the only color is in the clothes the children are wearing. The Gospel Hall is the painting of an old building. It was a post and beam building uh, that was used as a church for, oh, probably a 10 or 15 year period. And she painted it for a young friend of hers who went to church there. Uh, the house, you're going to have to shut that one off. She painted the Marcus Wade homestead on East Hill and gave that one an autumn setting with the dog in the yard and a couple of people out there. This one is not as colorful as some of the ones she's done, but um, she had a friend who commissioned her to do that painting for her. It was um, a relative. She was a relative of Marcus Wade and wanted it to remember as part of their family history. Um, she also did the one, uh, the same woman had the, same, had the picture of, of the old Haskell farm done. And this place still stands on Route 14 near Woodbury Lake. Uh, the picture shows two red barns which are now gone, and Albert sitting on a dock fishing in the lake. And Albert was very disturbed because Albert was a hard-working farmer and he did not spend much time sitting on the dock fishing in the lake, so he did not appreciate Bessie's interpretation of him. Um, 
This is a colorful picture. It has the autumn leaves again, and the red barn, some ducks, and some of Albert's cows. He liked the cows better than he did the fishermen. Sugaring is another thing that Bessie would remember from her childhood, and this painting is situated at the sugar house that belonged to Blanche and Charles Utley, up near Happy Landing. It went with the Happy Landing farm. And this is a very colorful picture with lots of activity in it. And it shows the people, the, the children sliding, the horses again, um, just lots of activity that she would have remembered when she was a child going to the sugar house. Um, the mill pond is probably the mud pond located in Woodbury Village beyond the school because her father owned the land surrounding that pond and they did, used to skate on it when they were young. Uh, this shows another skating party with two hills of snow coming down and boys with sleds um, on either side of the, the hills. It also has a lot of activity and a lot of color, mostly in the lake this time. The skaters are not as colorful, but they are active. Um, the, Ephraim Saul's house was another house that she painted for a friend. And this was one of her very early paintings. I believe that one was painted in 1942. And as far as I know, it's the only unsigned painting that is left. Most of the ones that are left have her, her Bessie Drennan signature across the bottom of it. Her last painting and I'm not real sure this was the last painting, but it was the last painting that she sold. Um, there's another picture of a, I think it might have been a school. And it has the horse sheds out to one side. It, it might possibly be a church. But it has a lot of children in front of it. And again, her horses and riders, her horses and sleighs, and people on foot walking. Uh, there's one that looks as though he's tiptoeing on snowshoes. Bessie was whimsical and, and really liked doing things like that. Um, her, her pictures have the same theme pretty much all the way through them, except for one, which was, um, she titled The Postman. Uh, and that one is in a bad snowstorm. It looks like a lot of swirling, driving snow, and this man struggling through the snow. And the background is very bare. There's just one tree in it, and then it looks as though it should be sky, but it's kind of grays and yellows. And it's really not a typical Bessie. Um, I don't know, I think that's all of them. I don't think you had the first. The last painting that Bessie sold, she was in bed at the tavern, the old tavern hotel, the old Montpelier Tavern in Montpelier, where her, she and her sisters stayed when the sisters served in legislature. And Bessie was sick. Um, and these people came in to visit her, and they asked if she had a, a painting to sell. And Blanche and Francis promptly informed them that Bessie had no more paintings. She was no longer able to paint, and they had no paintings left to sell. So the sisters went out of the room to do something. And as these people started to follow her out, follow them out, Bessie made a motion that she wanted them to wait a minute. And as soon as the door closed behind the sisters, Bessie crawled out of bed, crawled in under the bed, and brought this painting out to sell to these people. Now, I don't know whether this was the last painting that she painted, but I do know that it was the last painting that she sold. Um, back when Bessie was younger, and this probably would have been in the 1930s, one of the sisters was sick and, and a neighbor had sent in some food on a tray. And Bessie was supposed to wash the tray and return it to the neighbor. Well, Bessie washed the tray. And then Bessie decided that she would decorate the tray. So she painted flowers on the tray. 
quite a, a, a nice looking bouquet and the sisters were absolutely horrified when they found out that Bessie had ruined the neighbor's tray. And they took it back very apologetic that, that Bessie had tampered with their tray. Well, it has turned out to be one of the, the neighbor's descendants' treasured possessions because she has a tray painted by Bessie Trenlund. <laughs> but, um, but Bessie was the only one in her family that didn't serve in legislature. Blanche, Francis, Flora, and Mac, her, her only brother, were, the, were all served in legislature. Uh, and they would go to Montpelier. It was the habit because traveling was hard back in the years they were doing it. And they would move to Montpelier while legislature was in session and uh, close up their house and all go down and spend the winter at the, at the Montpelier Tavern. Um, and this was what got Bessie into art because they were looking for something to keep Bessie occupied when they sent her to this adult education program. And it really is kind of ironic because back when they were younger, everyone in the family was more important than Bessie, but Bessie has turned out to be the one that, that's remembered, that has left a legacy for people to remember her by. The Bessie Drennan exhibit was started in 1974. At that point, we were getting ready to celebrate the bicentennial, and our first project was to redo the town hall. And we needed money, I mean, we, we had no money. So we decided that we would do a foliage exhibit. Uh, several of the towns around us had been doing foliage exhibits for years, and they all had a theme. And we were discussing what we could use for a theme when Liza Meyer, who was the one that, that really was the driving force behind starting the Bessie Drennan exhibit, uh, came up with the idea of using Bessie's um, paintings. She had a large number of them and knew a lot of people who had Bessie Drennan paintings that would be willing to loan them. So this is how the Bessie Drennan exhibit started. And it started out as an exhibit of Bessie's paintings, but there really weren't enough of them to make a large exhibit, so we had to have something else to go along with it. So then we opened it up to the craftspeople so they could come in and sell their wares, but it was limited to people that lived in Woodbury. And they would bring in their crafts, and um, the Bicentennial Group would sell them for a percentage of their sales, uh, a commission on, the, on their sales. And they also started serving soup and sandwich lunches which were quite successful. All the food was homemade. Um, Cliff and Irene Rathburn worked on it for years. Ken and Dorothy Geyer, John and Peg Knight, Liza and Hugo Meyer. Um, the first year we insured everything and that proved financially a disaster. Um, so the next year we came up with the idea that we would have someone sleep in the church to protect all the valuables all the crafts and all the paintings. So that was the big thing, going down to sleep in South Woodbury Church, one of the nights the exhibit was set up. And everyone took turns. <laughs> it really wasn't very comfortable. And the church was pretty inconvenient. It still had the old outdoor toilet and no running water, but um, we persevered. And then we had a, a bus group that stopped. They saw the signs out and they came from Western Illinois. And they asked their bus driver if he'd stop and see if they'd serve him lunch. So they stopped and the bus driver went in and they said yes, they'd be glad to serve if they could just wait for like 20 minutes so they could get their sandwiches made and things. So these people had a wonderful time. Uh, and the outdoor toilet proved to be one of the highlights of their visits. They all had to have their pictures taken either going in or coming out. That and the wood stove, which has been there I don't know how many years and which is always used to heat soup on. Um, the bus has been back every year since that. The same bus tour group comes every year. Um, it's been in operation now for 20, this 1996 is the 22nd year of the Bessie Drennan exhibit. Uh, Liza Meyer was in charge of it for the first eight years, first seven years, and then she, passed away in a 
and Peg Knight took over. She, she acted as chairman for one year. Then Carol Landy took over and she acted as chairman for the next 10 years and did a very capable job. Um, it has really turned into a community thing. And the people are really good about turning out to help. They come, they wait table, they bring their crafts, they make food, they make pies, soup, sandwiches. Um, and they really look forward to it. They come to lunch, for lunch, some of them come every day, some of them come one day. Um, and they stay, and they talk. <laughs> it really has turned into one of our better community events. Um, we have people that take time off from work so they can come in and work at it. Um, I don't know, what else do you want? The proceeds from this exhibit are used for, go back into the community. The uh, craftspeople get their, whatever they sell, less their commission. And the proceeds that the Fireman's Auxiliary gets. Um, the Fireman's Auxiliary is the outgrowth of the Bicentennial Committee. Um, this money is used for scholarships. We, the proceeds for, uh, that the Auxiliary gets from, from sponsoring the Bessie Drennan exhibit is used for a scholarship at Hayes and Union for a Woodbury student. And sometimes if we have more than one Woodbury student going to college, the school divides up the scholarship among them. Uh, and then we send children to Buck Lake Camp, the Green Mountain Conservation Camp that the Fish and Game Department runs in Woodbury. We also help with community projects, um, repairs to buildings. Um, we've donated toward their skating program. We let them use our, our land to, to hold, have their skating rinks on. Um, Oh, we've helped with repairs to various buildings. Um, all the money that comes in goes back into the community. So. Thank you. 